Coming up on Factory Made. How cotton gets pulled, twisted, dyed, and torched long before it's cut into blue jeans. And how a little tough love turns out a trumpet with perfect pitch. Then, right down to the laces, each one winds up exactly the same. But getting these footballs into the NFL's end zone is no easy score. Everybody has their favorite pair of jeans. The average American owns about eight in all shapes and sizes. Denim fabric was born in Europe in the 1600s. But it was in California during the gold rush that it was first cut into a pair of jeans. The rugged material caught on like gold fever among prospectors. And from that moment on, denim jeans have been a cool American classic. Today, the American Cotton Growers Textile Mill in Littlefield, Texas is the largest denim producer in the U.S. They weave enough of the fabric to stitch up more than 26 million pairs of jeans a year. Each pair starts in the field where cotton is grown and picked. Cotton gets a thorough cleaning to filter out any debris from the field. Who wants leftover stems or seeds in their jeans? So these bales of raw cotton are sent to the cotton gin. Gin is short for engine. First, the gin loosens the fiber, removing stems and leaves. Inside, the cotton moves through a big comb, separating the seeds from the good stuff. The tufts are blown in a 14-hour fluff cycle, getting rid of any remaining fragments. It may seem like overkill, but debris left in the cotton can make the color uneven, and worse, cause thread breaks during weaving. The cleaner the cotton, the higher the grade it gets, and the higher the price. But there's still a long way to go before this cotton becomes denim. First, it has to be spun into yarn. As a web starts forming, it gets twisted into a loose rope called a sliver. The sliver endures a lot of twisting, winding, and coiling. It's off to the spinning machine where it gets stretched and spun into yarn. Inside, it's a rough ride. Rotors whiz at 70,000 RPM, about as fast as some jet engines. The rotors pull on the loose fibers and twist them tightly into yarn. For every inch of sliver, the machine produces nearly eight feet of yarn. Next, about 360 spools are wound together for dyeing. Each spool holds 50 yards, so that's about 10 miles of yarn winding its way through the factory. Before any dye job, the yarn gets a hot bath in sodium hydroxide. It strips out any natural waxes and oils that could make the coloring uneven. Now the yarn dives into a froth of indigo dye. It looks like a vat of blueberry jam, primed to stain miles of cotton. The Egyptian pharaohs used indigo from plants on their royal garments. Now, a synthetic form is available to all commoners, giving denim that classic dark blue hue.
after machines rinse and dry the blue yarn, it's time for weaving on the hyper-fast looms. This is where all that cotton becomes a classic denim fabric. Coming up, a frozen bath helps warm up a trumpet sound. But first, why denim has to pass through fire to get that cool blue look. It's a long journey for cotton to become denim. 12 days and a whole lot of shaking, cleaning, spinning, and dyeing. And it's all about to come together here inside the weaving room. These looms are working around the clock. Each one cranks out 640 yards of fabric a day. Enough to craft 500 pairs of jeans. Classic denim is actually a blend of indigo colored thread and undyed white thread. The combination was supposedly designed to save money or create a softer jean. Either way, the look is now classic. The looms weave at lightning speed, but when they're slowed down, you can see the weaving process more clearly. The vertical colored threads alternate moving up and down on the loom. Meanwhile, a white thread shoots between the colored threads and across the weave horizontally. At regular speed, the woven denim flies off the loom at 150 yards a minute. Then, after all this hard work, the material gets torched. But just for a second, it's to singe off all that extra fuzz from all the yanking during the looming process. After passing through fire, this denim is done. Most of the good stuff here will get shipped off to clothing manufacturers. But some is kept to make jeans for employees and product samples for customers. It takes about one and a quarter square yards of denim to make a pair of jeans. A typical pair has 21 pieces. Zippers are standard, but only since the 1950s. The original jeans had button flies. Not jeans yet. Not without pocket rivets to reinforce stress points in the stitching. Denim rivets were so revolutionary in the 1800s, they got their own patent. Fresh off the line, the jeans look perfect. Maybe a little too perfect and stiff. They need a good roughing up if they want that lived-in look. That requires a specialist. He styles with sandpaper to scuff the pant legs and see. Then he powers up a rotary tool to fashion some premature frays in the fabric. And the final stroke, stone washing to mimic years of wear. The jeans roll around in an industrial washer along with an equal weight of pumice stones. This volcanic rock is ideal because it's lightweight and abrasive. Of course, it can also do a number on the washer. This protective metal lid keeps the glass door from shattering. What began as a perfect denim weave now ends as a perfectly flawed pair of blue jeans. And a perfect addition to any wardrobe.